In today's journey, we follow up a viewer request by taking a deeper dive into what controls our anti-gravity pump from Northern Brewer. Although most manufacturers would just call this a membrane pump. Although technically the term is diaphragm pump. Regardless, I digress. Personally, I love the pump. It makes my job a lot easier. The power supply it comes with works great, but we had to supply our own variable speed controller for the motor and an emergency shutoff in the form of a foot switch. We only used it once without it, and it felt really unsafe because you have to balance your racking arms and flip a switch on a wire. What's great about this is that it will cut the power at the outlet. Essentially making this a dead man switch so that if anything goes wrong, the entire system's cut. Be warned though, because the power supply is not really meant to be treated like this. You will notice there's a delay if you rapidly turn it on and off. This is a self-protection mode that prevents it from damaging any equipment further down the line. And even though we highly encourage the use of a foot pedal and there's another inline switch in the control box, this switch here is also really important to us as you shouldn't plug the pump in until you are ready to turn it on. This prevents misfires and activating the pump when you don't mean to if you bump into the foot pedal. We would prefer if it was waterproof, just like we wish this AC adapter was ready to be around water, because that's what brewing is, is being around water. Kind of like how this control box is mostly just an extension cable. This is so that we can mount the box and the pump wherever we need to during filming without it becoming a distraction to what we want you to focus on. And we would recommend you to permanently mount it so that it fits into your life perfectly. Which should be easy because as you can see from the screenshot, this is only made of five off the shelf components that we got off Amazon and the links are available in the description. And don't worry, this easy project even has an easy mode. As at the end of the day, the only thing that's really in here is a PWM DC motor controller, which sounds fancy, but that's all it is. Two wires in, positive negative, two wires out, positive negative. And what's really cool is that if you inverse that to the motor, the worst thing that'll happen is it'll go backwards. But it's a diaphragm pump, so it'll still go forward. However, don't tempt fate and just wire it in the right direction in the first place. If you do go shopping for your parts by yourself, make sure that you get a PWM module because if you change the voltage, you will destroy the pump. It needs to be 12 volts. Instead of controlling the voltage, what these PWMs or pulse width modulation devices will do is turn the pump on and off repeatedly to control the speed. And what's cool is all the electronics are already included. All you have to do is screw in the wires. But a pro tip would be to glue them in place once you have them screwed down because they can tug out over time. We'll have to redesign how we do our extension cable so that this won't become a problem in the future. If this is your first time, just keep in mind that positive is red and negative is black. In North America, at least. We do recommend sticking with standards as they're there for a reason. We have included a link to some wire, but because it's low voltage, low amperage, you don't need to use anything fancy, but would in doubt use something that's recommended. For this project, it's 12 volts and 5 amps, and that's going to be pretty easy to cover. But unfortunately, we've moved on to the hard part, and that's going to be the port and jacks. We have an easy way lined up right now, but we would say these are for more advanced users, as it can be a hard to identify where the positive and negatives are supposed to go. We'll be covering that in our soldering video, but for the first timers, we recommend these pigtails that are the same size plug and jack, but have the wires already attached, so no soldering required. Just strip the wires back enough so that they get good contact with those screws and you're done. Well, outside of a project box, you will want to houses in something that are going to keep it safe from the elements and the water. So just use a drill to drill out some holes that'll fit the parts and then you're done. These are the same ones we use. They're big enough to hold the entire project and it has a flange so that we can either screw it or clamp it to whatever surface we need to. Plus it's waterproof until you drill holes in it. And what's cool is everything's circular, so you don't have to figure out how to drill a square hole. And if you were hoping for a more in-depth visual representation of how to actually do the physical parts, well, we're going to cover some of this during our soldering and how to build a project video that we've planned out. We found too many errors within our prototype one to want to say, hey, do it this exact way yet. For example, how is this not shorted out yet? But I can show you right now that you see that one with the little rivet 
that's going to be the center post and the other two are going to be the outside barrel. And of course you should always double check with your power supply that which is which. And here you can see that the positive is pointing to the center whereas the negative is a C around it. And you should always double check this when you get new equipment as suppliers can change over time. But if you have any other questions, please let us know down in the comment section. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to make sure that you don't miss out on our soldering video that we have planned next. In the meantime, feel free to check out some of our other videos that are based around the tech in brewing.